If you've been thinking about getting into macro photography but don't really know where to start, then this is the video for you. In under 10 minutes I'm going to explain exactly how you can take photos that look like these. I'm gonna show you the settings, the gear that you need and the technique on how to do it. And if you want to photograph other things than insects with a macro lens, just apply the tips I show you in this video for insects and you will get beautiful results no matter what you're photographing. Let's begin by talking about gear. The camera doesn't really matter that much. You can use pretty much any DSLR or mirrorless camera made in the last 10 years or so and you will get beautiful results. Many of the best macro photographers in the world use older cameras and honestly the camera is not that important. Doesn't matter if you use a full frame or a smaller sensor, doesn't matter if it's a DSLR or a mirrorless. Just use the camera you have right now and you will get very, very far with that. Lenses though are a different story. You need some kind of special lens to be able to focus as closely as you need for macro photography. And it depends a bit on what kind of budget you have. If you have a budget of less than $100, my recommendation is that you get some extension tubes. You can get them cheaply on eBay, maybe as low as like $15 for a set. And uh, you just put them between any regular lens and your camera. And the more extension tubes you add, the closer you will be able to focus. The image quality with extension tubes is good. Uh, the only downside is basically that it's hard to change the magnification while you're photographing, then you have to remove some extension tubes if you want to zoom out or add some if you want to zoom in. To make all this easier, I would recommend you to buy a dedicated macro lens if you have the money for it. My recommendation is a macro lens from Laowa because they are very good value for money. You can get them for around $400. And you can also use the discount code that I have in the video description to get them even cheaper. And the reason I love the lenses from Laowa in particular is that they have excellent image quality and they go to two times magnification, which is very, very helpful if you're photographing insects. Two times magnification means that whatever you're photographing will be twice as big on your camera sensor as it is in real life. If you're unsure about exactly what Laowa macro lens to get, just use my lens guide that you can go to at this URL and I will help you out. Okay, so we have a camera and a great lens. Now we're ready to go, right? Not quite. Uh, in macro photography at high magnifications, for example when photographing insects, you really need to have a flash. And no, not one of these flashes. I would not recommend these because they don't give nice looking results and they are very expensive. Just use a regular on-camera flash, for example um, one like this. This is one of my favorites, it's the Godox V350. And uh, you can use any on-camera flash, it will probably be just fine for macro photography. But it's very important to have some kind of diffusion because if you don't have that, the images will not look that good. Look at this photo taken without a diffuser and then compare it with this photo taken with a diffuser. Most people would probably say that the photo with a diffuser is better looking than the photo without a diffuser. And if you are a beginner anxious to get going, I recommend you to just use a normal sheet of paper like this one and just cut the hole in the middle and place it over your lens like this. And this is perfectly adequate. This solution is of course very flimsy, but it will give you nice looking results. What happens here is that the flash will uh, hit the paper in a pretty large area. So it will not only transfer the light to your subject in front of the camera, but it will also make the light source a lot bigger and softer than without a diffuser and that makes a big big difference in how the image quality will be. When you have tried the paper and you want to get more serious I recommend it to get a dedicated diffuser. I like for example this kind of diffuser that um, you can put like this. It's foldable and it's pretty cheap. You can get them for around um, $15 or on Amazon. 
And there are even more serious diffusers like the Cygnus Tech or the AK diffuser. And uh, those ones are probably the best ones out there, but they are a bit more expensive. So to summarize, you need a camera, a macro lens or extension tubes plus a regular lens, a flash and a diffuser. And then I would say you're ready to go out photographing. So let's talk about settings. And since this is macro photography in 10 minutes and not in 30 minutes, I will not go into detail about why I recommend the following settings. I'm just gonna tell you to use these settings and you will get good results. First of all, set your camera in manual mode because we wanna have full control over the settings. And then you set ISO 200, you set an aperture of f8, and you set a shutter speed of 1 over 200 seconds. Then you set the flash also in manual mode and you set it at a strength of 1 16th. And then you take a test photo and see how it looks. And if it's very dark, just increase the strength on the flash to maybe 1 over 8. And if it's too bright, you decrease the strength of the flash to maybe 1 over 32. And uh, then you have great settings to get started with macro photography and these settings will bring you photos that look like this. And these are actually the settings that I use myself most of the time. One thing that you will likely notice is that the viewfinder in your camera is very very dark when you're using a macro lens and when you're focusing closely. And there is a setting in pretty much every mirrorless camera to brighten the viewfinder artificially. For example in Sony cameras this setting is called setting effect and you want to turn it off. And uh, all different camera brands have different names for this setting so you have to find it in your menu. Lastly, I would recommend you to set the white balance to something static. I set it at 5500 Kelvin because that is uh, kind of the same color as your flash. So it will always bring you a nice exposure with nice colors. Okay, so we have discussed gear, we have discussed settings. Now let's just talk briefly about how you're gonna take the photos, what kind of technique you need to take beautiful insect macro photos. What I recommend you to do is to set your macro lens in manual mode. And if you're using extension tubes, uh, you will kind of be forced to focus manually anyway. Or if you're using a lava macro lens that is manual, you will also have to focus manually. And what I try to do is that I set the uh, magnification beforehand by just turning the focusing ring. And uh, for most insects I actually go with two times magnification or at least one time magnification to get close enough. So you kind of look at your focusing ring and set it to one time magnification. And then you hold the camera and you slowly rock back and forth until your subject is in focus. One setting in the camera that can be very helpful here is to enable focus peaking. Pretty much every camera has this setting and it will highlight the sharp parts of your photo. So it will make manual focusing a lot easier. So just rock your camera back and forth until the eyes of the insect are in focus, that they light up with the focus peaking. And then just take a lot of photos while you have the insect's eye in focus. And that's how I go about it. You will find that maybe 90% of your photos are not focused in the right place. But that's fine as long as you get at least one photo that is focused in the right place. And you will also notice that your picture is very very shaky. Even if you have image stabilization in your camera it will be shaky when you're doing macro photography. One tip to get around this is that if you're photographing an insect and it's sitting on a leaf or something, I always try to hold the leaf with my left hand while I'm photographing with my right hand. Uh, or if it's sitting on a stem or something, hold the stem so that it's still. And the very best thing you can do is to try to connect them, you, the hand that you're holding the insect with uh, to the hand that you're holding the camera with, like this. And then you will get a super stable uh, situation where you can get very nice photos and it's easy to adjust the background and the, the composition and all of that. But you might be thinking, Michael, it's very, very hard to approach insects. They will just fly away. And yes, most of them will actually fly away when you approach with your camera. And that's fine. 
What you will notice if you're out for a couple of hours trying to take macro photos of insects is that some of them are not that skittish. Some insects are fine with you photographing them. So you just need to be a bit patient and find these insects. I would say maybe 10 to 20% of all insects that you find will allow you to photograph them, at least if you are pretty quick. So with the gear, the settings and the technique I just explained to you, you will be able to take very nice macro photos of live insects, at least after a little bit of practice. If you want a deeper explanation of how to get started with macro photography, I have a video about that as well. It's basically the same as this video, but longer and more detailed. And please do subscribe if you're into macro photography, because that is what my YouTube channel is all about. See you soon again.